Every rotary has cones, and these are used to attach the cylindrical object. To do so, you need to loosen the lever here and separate the cones from each other. Place the cylindrical object, in this case a bottle like this, then push the movable cone towards it and once it sits properly, tighten the lever. If processing the same item over and over again, you can quick swap the items as the movable cone assembly is spring loaded. If you would like to engrave, for example, here, you can see that this area will not be flat in terms of the focal length. In such a case, you can tilt the rotary like this. You also have the possibility to adjust the height of the cones. You have a scale on both sides so you can align the height of both cones equally. There are other attachment fixtures than the cones. We have the manual ring chuck, the manual three-jaw chuck, the standard three-jaw chuck and the drill chuck. And these are used depending on the cylindrical object. When you order these, this is how they come once you have unboxed it. Here is an example of the standard three-jaw chuck. Mount the chuck on the adapter plate and attach it with the three screws. To change the attachment fixtures, you need two wrench keys. To open and close the jaws, you need to use a designated tool. If you are using the manual three-jaw chuck, you can open and close the jaws by turning the wheel by hand. Or you can use the small lever that comes with it. To replace the jaws you need to open the chuck fully and remove them. As you can see here there is a spiral pattern inside the chuck. Each of the jaw slots are marked with a number and it's important that you start with the slot 1 using the jaw number 1 and then do jaw number 2 and then finally number 3. Take the designated tool and turn the wheel anti-clockwise until the outer ring has passed the first slot. Turn it back a bit until the slot is open. Push in the jaw marked with a 1 until it stops. Turn the wheel again and do the same thing for jaw number 2 and number 3. When all the three jaws have been placed onto the chuck, you can use the tool and then observe that all jaws are moving inwards. If one or more jaws are not moving inwards, you will have to repeat this starting with the first jaw. Before installing the drive roll mechanism, we are going to go over the belt tension first. Here you can see the rotary for the Speedy 300 and for the Speedy 360. To mount the drive roll mechanism, first remove the covers. The Speedy 100 and 300 have this style version, and the rest of the rotaries have the same style version as the Speedy 360. The only difference is the belt tension mechanics. First we need to loosen the belt tension. On the Speedy 300 we have to loosen these two screws. On the Speedy 360, we first need to remove the belt tensioning screw, and then these two screws. To tension the belt on the Speedy 300, regardless if it's a cone or the dry roll mechanism that is installed, you tighten the belt by pushing the motor holder plate like this, and then tighten the screws. On the Speedy 360, you first need to attach the belt tensioning screw. The distance here should be 13 mm. 
When this is done, you can tighten the two screws. To mount the dry roll mechanism, we first need to remove the belt. Now remove these two screws and lift up the cone. When installing the dry roll mechanism, make sure that the guide holes are properly on the guide pins on the below plate. Attach the screws and then install the belt. Tension the belt according to what we demonstrated earlier. Finally install the opposite end of the dry roll mechanism.